Better days are coming by and by. When I reach that city way up in the sky, troubles will be over. I'll be home at last. Better days are coming by and by. Better days are coming by and by. When I reach that city way up in the sky, Troubles will be over, I'll be home at last. Better days are coming, by and by. Better days are coming, by and by. When I reach that city, way up in the sky. Troubles will be over, I'll be home at last. Better days are coming, by and by. Better days are coming, by and by. When I reach that city, way up in the sky, troubles will be over, I'll be home at last. Better days are coming, by and by. Better days are coming, by and by. When I reach that city, way up in the sky, Troubles will be over, I'll be home at last. Better days are coming, by and by. Well, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord. Good morning, Dad. God bless you, Deacon and Mother Wilson. Good morning, Sister Bailey. God bless you, Sister Jan. Good morning, Dion. God bless you, Yolanda. God bless you, Jesse. Praise the Lord, Beverly. God bless you, Mary. Praise the Lord, Lady Holden. God bless you, Elder Bailey. Praise the Lord, Elder Smith. God bless you, Thomasina. God bless you, Marion. Praise the Lord, Sister Treat. God bless you, Sister Nixon. Praise the Lord, Missionary Johnson. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Page. God bless you, Caprice. God bless you, Carly. God bless you, Sister Stimson. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Deacon Briggs. God bless you, Natasha. God bless you, my niece. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Deacon and Sister Morris, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bishop and Mother Joseph, praise the Lord. Mother Fears, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Sister Robinson, God bless you. Sister Tonda, God bless you. God bless you. Stokes family, thank you so much for being with us yesterday. God bless you. God bless you, Elder Smith, praying and lifting you up in prayer, sir. God bless you, Mother Hudson. Thank you so much. Please keep praying for us. God bless you. God bless you, Tiana. God bless you, Maxine. God bless you, Sister Petaway. Praise the Lord, Angela. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sister Hedrick. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And once again, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you in a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to trust and believe and focus on God. Hallelujah. In difficult times and difficult seasons, you know, prayer is not just for good times. Prayer is your sustaining Hallelujah. Power in the midst of troubling times. And as all of you or some of you should know by now, um, our family is grieving. We um, lost my niece on um, early yesterday morning, and it is certainly um, shaken our family, my uh, our entire household. My sisters. This is my sister Judy's daughter um, who was taken from us unexpectedly. And this was um, my cousins to my my children and um certainly to uh, the niece to my wife and myself and it is challenging and but i want you to pray for my sister judy i want you to pray for um jasmine's daughter jada and i want you to pray for all of us because all of us are trying to manage this incredible loss but you know faith is not just what you do when you want something faith is what you do when god is sustaining you through something that you did not expect, but yet his grace remains sufficient. And that's when, in all honesty, the what you say you know about the word and what you say you know about God comes into question and into play. Lord, can you take me through 
this moment, this season. So please lift us up, all of us up in prayer as we continue to do what we need to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to go to the word today. And before I do that, if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat. Please um, put it into, um, if it's a personal issue, please send it to um, Refuge Temple Church or to Reginald Davis, but put that name in the chat so that we can add those names to the prayer list, to the prayer book, and continue to believe God for the working of miracles. I want to direct your attention to um, the book of First Thessalonians, chapter number five. First Thessalonians, chapter number five, and I want you to bear with me because I want to read verses one through ten. Verses one through ten of First Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that ye should that the day should overtake you as a thief. For ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. I want to talk for a little bit this morning from subject times and seasons, times and seasons. Uh, yesterday and the day before, we talked about the rapture of the church, the fact that Jesus Christ is indeed coming um, to catch away, rapture the saints, and take us with him. Dead in Christ rise, those who are alive and remain are caught up to meet him in the air. And it opened up for Paul the need to not only discuss what would happen to the saints, but what would happen to the world. Because the rapture is on our calendar. Listen to me carefully. The rapture is on the calendar of the believer. Every believer is looking for the rapture. And every believer that is born again and ready is going to be caught up in the rapture. But the next event on the calendar of the world is the judgment of God. The next event on the calendar of the world, those who don't know Christ, those who are outside of Christ, those who don't have a connection with Christ, is the judgment of God. And the judgment of God is surely to come upon this earth. And that's why Paul makes this statement, because obviously he needed to write about the rapture because there was some confusion as people died, as people were martyred, as people were taken away um, from this life. There was a sense of sorrow and dread because they died before Jesus came and they were wondering what's going to happen to people that die before Jesus comes back. He answered that question. The Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, voice of God, the trump of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That answers the question. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet him, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That answers that question of what happens to my loved ones who died in Christ. But the, the, the other question that Paul is trying to encourage, or maybe it's not even a question, it's more of a reminder. Because he says, I don't need to tell you because I've already told you about the times and the seasons. I've warned you concerning the judgment of God that will come upon the earth. And so we understand that. But he says, you know perfectly 
that the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. Now, when the Bible speaks about the day of the Lord, it is found over and over again in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It is referring to the judgment that is going to come upon the earth. And yes, there is a judgment coming upon the earth. Holly, the wickedness of the earth has to be judged because if God, listen to me, if God um, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, for their wickedness. If God destroyed the entire planet for its wickedness in the days of Noah, then surely God has to judge the evil that is in this world. The corruption, the hatred, the violence, hallelujah, the, the sheer evil that is upon the earth, it has to be judged. And more importantly, the, the, the nations have to be judged for their rejection of, of Jesus Christ. Here he is the savior that offers salvation to anybody, everybody, anybody can be saved. Anybody can know the Lord. Anybody can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And yet there are people that reject it out of hand, don't want any part of it, don't want anything to do with it. And then in the midst of their rejection, the perversion that has fallen upon the society, people calling right wrong and calling wrong right and, and, and making even believers feel like we've done something wrong because we speak against sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they want us to believe somehow that we've done something wrong. Oh, we're marginalizing. Oh, God, the community. We're marginalizing behaviors because we don't accept every kind of behavior. Well, it's not what I accept. It's what the word of God accepts. You know, and I want to be clear and I want to make sure everybody hears this, that Reginald Davis and most saints don't hate anybody. We don't hate people because they live a certain lifestyle. We don't hate them because they indulge in certain behaviors, but we know those behaviors are against the word of God and it's our sacred responsibility not to judge a person, but to show them a better way and to tell them that the day is coming when God will judge the sin of this world. And you need to, and just like we shared, just like the ark, the ark was the place, hallelujah, of deliverance, that when God's judgment was being poured out upon the earth, hallelujah, Hallelujah. The ark was there for Noah, for his families, and many others could have joined the ark, but they just didn't choose to believe. They just didn't choose to accept. They said, Noah, it's never rained before. So why should we try to get in this ark and get on this boat that you built on dry land? Hallelujah. But Noah kept preaching to warn the people and saints of God, people of God, we've got to keep declaring the fact that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is coming again. And the judgment of God is coming upon the earth. The rapture is there. Listen to me. The rapture has been prepared to cause us to escape the judgment. If I know the judgment is coming, oh hallelujah, if I know the judgment is coming, then I have to prepare myself for the escape. If the ship is going down, give me a life preserver, oh God, and give get me on the lifeboat. If the ship is going down, and yes my friend, this world, all that we've attached ourselves to, all that we've engrossed ourselves in, this world is going down. But there's a life preserver. There's a life preserver preserver. There's a lifeboat and the name of the lifeboat is Jesus Christ and you can escape the judgment. But I need to tell you about the times. I need to tell you about the seasons. I said this yesterday that everything has been put in place so that Jesus Christ can return for the church. And once Jesus Christ returns for the church, then the judgment of God, the day of the Lord is going to be released upon this earth. Oh my God, you talk about this pandemic being so challenging to us. Oh my, if you miss the rapture and you have to deal with the day of the Lord, this, this pandemic is going to seem like a walk in the park. When God's judgment is poured out upon the nations, God's judgment is poured out upon the earth. God's, un oh God, because his favor, this is the time of grace. This is the time of grace. This is the time of preparation. This is the time that I need to be sure, oh my God, that I'm ready to escape this place. Hallelujah. You know, I, 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 I was in New York and we were flying back and forth and I was making reservations. I made a reservation for my travel. I made a reservation for my place. Hallelujah. I had to have a place to stay when I got to New York and I had to get to New York and I had to make reservations to get there. Well, heaven is a prepared place. 
place and you need to reserve your place in heaven. Oh God, how do I reserve my place in heaven? By making sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Make sure, hallelujah, that your name is written there. Make sure that Jesus Christ has recorded your reservation, that you've reserved your place. Oh God, the rapture is how I'm going to get there. And I, oh God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I've reserved my place in the rapture because I'm going to that place where Jesus is. That's the goal. But the times and the seasons tell us that we need to be prepared. And this is the time for preparation. You don't go to the airport trying to find a flight. You don't go to the airport trying to get on a plane. You make that reservation from your house. You get on that phone. You get on your computer. You get on some device and you go online and you make your reservation. And by the time you get to the airport, you've got a seat assignment. By the time you get to the airport, they can print you out a ticket and you go through security and you get on your plane. Hallelujah. You don't wait until the day of the Lord. Oh God, to say, Lord, have mercy on me. You don't wait until the day of the Lord to say, Lord, save me from your wrath. You don't wait until the day of the Lord to say, Lord, hallelujah, accept me now. No, while the, when the Bible says the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The moment the Lord has pricked your heart, the moment the Lord has troubled your spirit and told you you've got to get ready, that's the time that you have to move. Oh God, and don't move slowly, saints. Oh God, don't move slowly. You just don't know. You just don't know. So don't move slowly, my brother. If you don't know that you're saved, if you don't know you have a reservation, if you don't know that God is prepared you to be delivered from his wrath and delivered into his grace, then you need to prepare right now. You don't need to wait. You don't need to drag your feet. What are you waiting for? If you knew the times and the seasons, you would be running. Oh my God. If you knew how close, oh God, the end of your days were, you would be running. If you knew how close you were, oh my God, to Jesus Christ coming to take the church out of here. You would be running. Oh, God, you wouldn't be getting involved in all of this stuff thinking that you're going to live forever. Baby, ain't nobody going to live forever. Holly, if the rapture doesn't come tomorrow, nobody told you you would be here tomorrow. And while you're here, this is your window. This space of time that God has given you is your window to prepare yourself for, so you can miss the day of the Lord. Because look at what the Bible says. I'm, I'm going to deal with this for a couple of days. Look at verse two. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. That's why for years since I got saved, I got saved 45 years ago. For years, people have been trying to predict the end times, predict the rapture, predict the when the Antichrist would be re revealed, predict when the tribulation would start. The Bible never told us to predict it. The Bible gave us signs. The Bible gave us warnings. But Jesus says no man knoweth. So why are you trying to know what Jesus said no man knoweth? You're wasting your time. Oh, I'm looking at the calendars. and I'm reading when the Jews do this and this happens. Nothing wrong with knowing about the signs. But the signs were not given for you to predict the coming of the Lord. The signs were given for you to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The signs were not given for you to predict the coming of the Lord. The signs were given for you to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Knowing that I don't know when. Knowing I don't know how it's going to happen. He says like a thief. The thief doesn't tell you he's coming to your house. The thief doesn't call you up and say, you know, I'm going to rob your house tonight. Just wanted to let you know you can leave some cookies and crackers on the table because I'm coming to rob you. No, the thief doesn't tell you that. The thief waits until you're asleep or the thief waits until you're gone. Now, some thieves are so bold, they'll come into the house while you're in the house. So they wait for the house to get quiet. They wait for you to go to sleep and then they break into your house. Some thieves wait for you not to be in place, not to be at home. And then the thief cometh. Well, the day of the Lord is coming just like that thief. You don't know when he's coming. And either the thief is going to come, listen to me, either when you're asleep or when you're away from home. 
So don't be caught outside of the ark of safety and the thief of the night comes to, oh, Shataye, oh God, to take you away. Don't be laying there, oh God, wallowing and, and, and just living in sin when God's got a way out for you. This is the season to prepare. I've got to close, but as I was thinking about this text this morning, I remember the message that one of my junior pastors, Minister Trell Allen, preached, and he said the goal of the believer is not to get ready. The goal of the believer is to be ready because to be ready means you're in a state of readiness that if you come, Jesus, I'm ready to meet you. Hallelujah. I don't know when. I don't know the times. And knowing the times, once again, is not about you predicting. It's about you preparing. Prepare to meet thy God. Prepare to meet the Lord. Prepare to be ready to meet him and be ready. Don't start getting ready. Be ready, saints, to meet Jesus Christ when he comes. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, this morning I say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for your grace that is sufficient, Lord, in every condition that we face. Every problem, every trial, every test, every nuance of life, Lord, you provide grace for us to live. And at this moment, Lord, I'm living on your grace. My sisters, my father, my wife, my children, my nieces and nephews, we are living on your grace. Your grace is holding us and keeping us and, Lord, giving us the faith to look to you. Ah, oh, God, in what time that we did not know would come, time that we hoped would not come. But, Lord, you've provided grace for this moment. And I thank you for that. And I thank you, God, for your strength. I thank you for your peace. And God, I'm praying today that you would bless, Lord, everybody that's on this line this morning. I'm praying that you would bless everybody that comes to this line today. I'm thanking you, God, for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I feel their love and I feel their prayers and I feel their support. And I thank you for them now. Oh, God, because you are keeping us. You are keeping us, God, by your grace. You're keeping us, God, by your power. And I thank you today, Lord, because you're able. And Lord, I'm praying today for everybody that's on this line. I'm praying today for everybody that needs a miracle. I'm praying for today for everybody that needs you to do something, oh God, in their lives. I'm praying, God, that you would touch and strengthen. I'm praying, God, that as we lift up the names of friends and loved ones and children and grandchildren and those that we care about, God, that you would grant the petitions. God, that you would grant the grace and grant the mercy and grant the power. God, I'm praying today, God, that you would strengthen us. Oh, Shani Arabasaya. Oh, Oh, God, to trust you more and more. I'm praying for the release of unexpected favor and the release of miracles upon your sons and daughters. God, give us grace today. Give us power today. Give us help today, God. Lord, so many people we're praying for, Lord, are not saved. They're not saved. They're not saved. But I'm pleading with you, God, to reach out to them today, Lord, to stir their heart, to stir their mind, to break whatever yoke is holding them, to break whatever of bondage is keeping them, Lord, and to bring them to salvation. God, I know that you're a savior. I know that you can deliver. I know that you can set free. So God, stretch out your hand. Oh God, break the bonds. Oh God, of gangs. Break the bonds of violence. Break the bonds of degradation. Break the bonds. Oh God, break and destroy the yoke that holds them. And God, free them so they can turn their hearts to you. God, I'm praying today for everybody that's not ready. I'm praying today for everybody, oh God, that doesn't even know enough to get ready. I'm praying, God, that you would allow us to reach them and that you would reach out to them, that you would draw them to repentance, that you would draw them to the altar, that you would draw them to the cross. Oh God, the only place of safety and the only place of deliverance. Oh God, reach out to them now. Oh God, don't let them be lost, Jesus. Oh God, but touch and deliver. 
as only you can. God, we're praying for every name that is on the prayer list. My God, every name that's in the prayer book, every name in the chat, every name that's been submitted by text or email. God, we're praying for them today and we're lifting them up because we know that you're able. God, we're praying for Barbara and we're praying for Nancy. We're praying for Shana and we're praying for Daquan and Whitley, the Whitley family rather. We're praying for the Williams family, the Austin family. We're praying for Tommy and Tamara. We're praying for Amaria. God, we're praying for Christian. We're praying for Marcus, for Justin, for Joshua, for the Frederick family, the Davis family, the Granados family. God, we're praying for Cynthia Frederick today. We're praying for Brandy. We're lifting up Bobby Banner and family. We're praying for, oh God, those who are alone today. We're praying for our seniors. We're praying for those who are fighting addiction. God, we're praying for the Carey family. We're praying for Khalil. We're praying for Sanaya Diggs, for Candace Walker, for Charles Thomas. We're praying for Kimberly Crawford today. We're praying for Donetta and Soretta. We're praying for Deacon Brown today. We're praying for Diane. We're praying for Sister Wright today, for Stephen, for Nene, for Melody White. We're praying for Phyllis Sharp today. We're praying for Beverly Taylor, for JP family, JP families. God, we're praying, my God, for Simone Jackson. We're praying for Cindy Tyler today. We're praying for Kiba. We're praying for April today. We're praying, my God, for Maurice. We're praying for Justin, for Phyllis. We're praying for Kim and Brian Hart. We're praying for Donna Jackson today, for Daryl Spigner. We're praying for Antoine and Sabrina Bugs today. We're praying for D'Angelo Shivers. We're lifting up the Jackson family. We're praying for Janet and her family. We're praying for Ray Harrell. God, every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, God, we're praying, my God, for your healing virtue, God, to be extended, for your deliverance to come, God, that you might destroy the yoke of the enemy today. Oh, God, I know it's Monday, but somebody can be save today. Oh God, stretch out your hand to save and to deliver. God, we pray for those God, we're praying for the Plummer family today. God, we're praying for those that need healing today, those that are sick, God. We're lifting up, my God, Shakita today, Lord. Keep her in surgery. We're praying for Penny. We're praying for Deacon James Grant today. God, we're praying for Melvin. We're praying for Tawania. We're praying for Chesley today. We're praying for Candace. We're praying, my God, for Mother Lois Harrison. God, we're believing you for healing virtue today. Everybody that needs healing. We're praying, oh God, for Mother, oh God, Ken and sister. We're praying, my God, for Robert Lee Penn. We're praying for Dr. Hayward today. We're praying for Norman Davis. We're praying for Candy, for Amelia, for Brother Travis Wright. We're praying for Johnny Morrison, for Sheila Pettiford, for Jordan today, for Mother Westbrook, for Rita. We're praying, my God, for Cynthia. We're praying for Johnny's healing. We're praying for Del Rico. We're praying, my God, for coffee. We're praying, my God, for Helen Alexander. We're lifting up Mother Elizabeth Wilson, God. We're praying, my God, for your healing virtue to be upon her. We're praying for Quasi. We're praying for Koya. We're praying for Elvin, everybody that needs healing today. We're praying for Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We're lifting up Mother Shirley Clark today. God, we're praying for Mother Evangeline Jenkins and her grandson. And God, we're praying, oh hallelujah, we're praying today for Lady Andrea Maxwell. We're lifting up Brother Wiggins. We're praying for Brother and Mother Sherrod today. God, we're praying for Deacon and Mother Garland. My God, we're praying for all those who need healing today. We're praying, my God, hallelujah, for Pastor Carl. We're praying for Pastor Jackson. We're lifting up Elder Smith today. My God, stretch out your healing hand. God, we're praying today. Oh God, for Elder Tyson. We're praying for those that need your healing touch, your delivering power. Oh God, raise them up, God, because we know that you're able. God, we're praying today. Oh my God, we're praying. Hallelujah. We're praying for Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff. God, thank you for your healing virtue. God, keep those blessings coming. God, we're praying today for Mother Tanaj, for Mother Holman, for Sister Simmons today. God, be because we know that you're a healer. Lord, we're lifting up today, my God, Cynthia and Catherine. God, we're praying, my God, for Duchess. Lord, for your healing virtue to continue to flow in the life of the woman of God. We're praying for everybody. We're praying for Mother Jill today. Oh, God, touch and heal because we know that you're able. Let your healing virtue flow and let your power be revealed. Lord, because by your stripes, God, we are healed. So go into the hospitals. Go into the nursing homes. Go, my God, into the cancer 
sickness award, the COVID award, the ICU awards. Lord, even go into hospice, God, because you're a healer even there. We're praying, my God, for your healing virtue to just abound and abound and abound. I'm praying for Marlette today. I'm praying for Maurice today. I'm praying, my God, for everybody that's dealing with cancer, heart issues. Oh, God, pulmonary issues. God, everybody that's dealing. My God, with MS, God. Lord, touch and heal and deliver because we know that you're able. God, we're praying today for grieving families everywhere. Lord, we understand the weight and the magnitude of grief. And God, I'm praying today for my sister. Oh, God, that you would touch her and strengthen her. I'm praying today for my niece, God. I'm praying, hallelujah, for my nephews. I'm praying for my children. I'm praying for Lady Davis and myself. I'm praying for my father today. Oh, God, my sisters, Lord, that you would touch and strengthen our family. Oh, God, we understand, oh, God, that you're sovereign. Oh, God, but it doesn't make it hurt less. So, God, help us today. Oh, God, give us the peace of God, that passive all understanding. Give us the grace of God to sustain us through these moments, God. And as you're blessing us, God, don't forget about the many others, oh, God, everywhere that are grieving. The Moore family, the Phillips family, the Parker family, Sister Glean's cousin, Diana Williams today, Lord, the Terry family, the Giotti family, the Levy and Byers family, God, with the Sister Taisha Scott, the Allen family, Pastor Susie Wright and her family, Roberta Jenkins today, the Gentry family, Margaret Speller and her family, the Robertson family, the Dover Elementary School, the Fushi family, Ann Kelly and family, Deborah Codrington, Elder Smith and his family, the Golden family, the Beulah Church family, oh God, Sister Maxine, the James family, the Washington family, Joanne Nixon, the Butler family, the Dykes family, the James family, Clark and Harrison families, God, the Simmons family, the Hayward family, the Jones McLaurin family, the Jenkins family. God, remember the black family today. Remember the family of Sister Lee and the Guiding Light Church. Remember the Simmons family, the Warren family. God, every grieving family everywhere. Remember, my God, the Lloyds, the Taylors, the Allens. Oh, God, the McNeelys. Remember the Carters and the Giles family. God, remember Oh, God, remember Margie. Remember the McLean Melvin family. Remember, my God, the Brian Hopkins family. Remember, my God, the Gary Porter family. Lord, Lord, grieving people everywhere. God, give them the comfort. Remember the Sapatas. Remember the Felix family. Remember, oh God, the Maddox. Remember the Boudrams, God. Remember every grieving family everywhere. Oh God, give grace today, God. Lord, give help today. Remember the Browns, the Stokes family, the Wilson family, God. Lord, continue to grant grace. Remember the Purdy's, the Sneeds. Oh God, the Mays, the Dunlaps, everybody that's grieving. Grieving widows and widowers, grieving children, grieving parents. Oh God, touch and strengthen them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, oh God, the entire body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Remember every bishop and elder. Remember every first lady today. Remember every pastor's child. God, remember every mother and missionary. Remember, my God, every, oh God, minister and deacon, every young person in the church, God. Lord, awaken the young people today. Lord, awaken the young people today, God. Oh, God, to the urgency of this moment. God, I'm praying that you awaken the church. Oh, God, it is high time that we awake out of our sleep, out of our slumber, and prepare ourselves and remain prepared. Oh, God, because you're coming again. Give us that urgency, God, to preach, to teach. Give us that urgency to encourage, to pray. Give us that urgency to examine ourselves and repent. Oh, God, so that we're ready. Oh, shanana Oh, God, we're ready to meet you, Lord. Oh, God, we know the times. We know the seasons. Lord, help us to be prepared. As we pray, my God, upon this world, as we pray for first responders, essential workers, as we pray for children and employees in schools, as we pray for everybody that works in the medical field, the dental field, the healthcare profession, Lord God, from the administrators, oh God, to the pay, to those who serve, oh God, even to those that clean, God, cover and protect them. Remember, oh God, our firemen, our policemen, our EMS, oh God, workers. Remember the people today, God. Oh God, remember the nations of the earth. Oh God, Trinidad, Tobago, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic. Oh God, remember Canada. Remember Mexico. Remember the nations of Africa. 
the nations of Europe and remember the United States God Lord heal the land oh God heal the land God oh Lord heal the land of hatred of racism oh God heal the land oh my God oh God of the lack of love heal the land God and cause the church to be the instrument that brings deliverance and salvation because the day of the Lord oh God is at hand oh God the day of the Lord is at hand help us to be ready Jesus to meet you because we know you're coming again soon bless our day today Lord make it fruitful make it productive make it all that we need it to be God keep us in your will and as you do all of this we give your name the glory the honor and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray amen 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 everybody hallelujah give God praise right now everybody give the Lord praise right now everybody hallelujah give the Lord praise hallelujah oh God hallelujah oh my God hallelujah thank you Lord this is my declaration today my calling is not to predict but to prepare my calling is not to predict but to prepare hallelujah the lord didn't call us to predict he's already given us the prophets he's already given us the apostles hallelujah so he has not called us to make the predictions he is he's given us jesus jesus declared and already told us what to look for but what our calling is now is to prepare god did not call us to predict he has called us to prepare, prepare to meet God, prepare for the soon coming of our king, prepare our hearts, prepare our souls and prepare as many people. Get the word out to as many people as possible that Jesus Christ is coming again soon. God did not call us. Hallelujah. To predict. He called us to prepare. Hallelujah. Prepare, prepare, prepare ourselves to meet the Lord when he comes. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. My heart is encouraged by the many condolences and, and encouraging messages that have gone forth. And we appreciate that. And my sister and our entire family appreciates that as well. Thank you for being with us today. You can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. You can um, share in this particular prayer service on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. And thank you to our Instagram viewers who have joined us today. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And all of these are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yesterday, hallelujah, you can get a part of two great services. You can listen to my son in the gospel, Elder Richard Taylor Jr., as he preached in Hallelujah Refuge Temple in Burlington and I was in Greater Refuge Temple in New York City on yesterday and so you can go to either one of those Facebook or YouTubes and be a part and listen to the messages and I know that both of them will bless you in Jesus name. You can stay connected through our radio broadcast that airs every day Monday through Friday at 11:30 a.m. on gregorygospel.com. Listen, thank you to everyone that shares your support with this ministry. We appreciate your sowing, we appreciate your giving. We appreciate you seeding into this work and you strengthen our hands so that we are able to do the things that we have to do. So listen, if you want to be a blessing, you can sow a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give electronically on our website, Refuge Temple, N is in North, C is in Carolina, dot com. Refuge Temple, N-C dot com and make your gift on our donate page. You can also, if you have the Givelify app, you can sow through Givelify and share your gift there. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington. Look for the picture of the church to know, know you're in the right place and make your gift. Or you can use our cash app, which is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign the number one refuge. And thank you for your support, but thank you most of all for being with us 
today. Thank you for joining us every day. Hallelujah. Because God is blessing people's lives because the saints of God are praying together. So God bless you and thank you. Please keep praying for Pastor Davis. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for my children. Keep praying for my father. Keep praying for my sisters. Keep praying, hallelujah, for our entire family. Please keep praying for Refuge Temple where God is blessing and keep praying for all the churches that are connected with this fellowship that God would continue to bless us. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom. Shalom.